Welcome back everyone, this is Edgar108 and you're watching an Infinity Blade walkthrough. We're continuing exactly from where we left off last chapter. If you haven't watched last chapter, click on the link below. In this chapter, I will take you on a trip around the kingdom so you can take advantage of all of its secrets before reaching the castle. As shown in last chapter, there, were, there are secrets like treasure chests, gold, and potions. Uh, make sure to get them before you move on. You need money to buy weapons, and you need weapons to level up. So make sure to get as much money as you can get. Alright, so moving on. On your left, there's a gold bag. And while you're walking, you're gonna find more gold bags. Or some items. Like that one over there. Here there isn't any. Oh, there's a potion there. Make sure to get it too. So you're gonna face up against an assassin. An assassin, his fighting style is really similar to a knight. So the best way to kill him is by carrying his attacks. So as I mentioned last chapter, when you defeat an enemy, you gain experience. That experience gets distributed among your weapons, which helps you to level up. If one of your items gets mastered, then you have to buy a new weapon of the same type. You do that by going to the store and picking that that item that you will pick. In this case, I'm picking the Ring of Flames. But you can pick anything else you want. So once again, be on the lookout for any gold that's laying around. Also, you have two choices. You have the door in the front and the stairs on the side. Both sides will force you to fight one enemy first before you can actually get inside the castle. This side though, has one additional enemy I want to show you. This next enemy you're about to fight, the best way to fight him off is by evading his moves. You can parry them as well, but you can also block them. But the strong attacks tend to be really So the best thing to do is just evade them. Or if you're good at carrying, then go ahead and carry them. really fast. <laughs> so from this point on you're gonna get on tap on that door over there and while you're walking you may find bags of gold like that one over there that one over there that one over there. There may be one behind this fence. You make sure to click all the time to make sure. And there's some and there's one over there. Alright, so here's the wood jester. He's actually uh, the most skilled enemy you can find in this game, other than the god king of course. One thing you're gonna learn from him, he loves to kick. You cannot parry nor have to kick. 
Of course, I already memorized all the moves, but you never find it before, so I'm gonna have a little trouble. Alright, if you parry and the switch is tap, tap as fast as can be finished. You will have to get into this game attacking if you like to parry a lot. Once you defeat the Greek Chester, you will get the money automatically. Or item, depending on what they have in there. Alright, so if you're ready to face what's behind this door, then click on the door and see what's inside. Like I said, when you're ready, make sure to click on the door. Yes, click on the door. Great, moving on. Alright, so you finally are in this room with circular stairs. The circular stairs takes you to the dungeon. To get to the Kyle King, you actually need to fight the enemy that's about to appear as soon as you click on the circle that's in front of you. Don't be surprised about the back of my game. I actually accidentally click somewhere and I don't know where. But on your left, there's a bag of money. Make sure to get it too. to face yourself with Iron Golem. He's kind of like the troll that you said last chapter. He is, they're powerful, but kind of slow. In this particular golem can take more hits than most of the enemies I've had before. Again, pairing you have to tap, so make sure to tap to the past your fingers. last chapter when you level up you get two skill points that you can distribute on on your um, health attack shield magic so make sure to get a treasure chest if you're lucky you get a lot of money if you're lucky you may even get a new weapon Alright, so you have two choices. One is to take to the elevator and get to the God King. The second is to go to the dungeons. For now, I'm just gonna go to the God King. 
for the dungeons, I will show you that on the next chapter. chapter three. So when you reach here, the, you're gonna see the Dark Knight and the God King. The Dark Knight's fighting style is very much like that enemy with the sword and the shield that you fought on the stairs. He, because he uses a sword and a shield as well. So he's very fast when it comes to small attacks. Not very powerful though. His lower attacks though are really powerful. So those are the ones you have to watch out for. the magic symbol. I click on it and draw the magic I have available. In this case, I have a fire drink, so I draw a circle for fire. Alright, so you finally get to face the Gat King. And as a sign of his own arrogance, he is willing to give you a weapon. Alright, so you got a ring, a lighted round. That one throws lightning attacks, and actually, the Gat King is usually pretty strong against magic, so you probably won't be able to use any, any of those rings for the most part. Merver combination then is that you go ahead and get a healing ring instead. So the guy can starts as level 50 and every time you defeat him he turns into 50 levels higher. He's faster, he's more powerful than any other enemy that you fight in this game. So all I can tell you is make sure to balance your defense, evasion, parry, and block. As a matter of fact, avoid blocking at all costs. Only for true emergency blocking. If you're gonna try the gas in the back of the block, it's gonna help you, then be ready to die. <laughs> Alright, so my magic uh, circle is so make sure to use it whenever that happens to kill yourself. So when you cut down a third of his health, he's gonna be impressed with your skin, and he's gonna ask to join him. 
you can choose to join him or you can get the weapon. In this case, I'm just gonna get it because I wanna defeat him. Alright, so those are the counter attacks I talked about. Be careful with those. When the Gatkin gets on this position, make sure to carry it with him. He will miss and block him. Alright, he gets in that position. After he does a half a circle, he can carry it. Alright, that's the thing that's also dangerous. So as soon as he starts the sword, make sure to carry that one as well. That means you defeated the God King. The God King is, of course, surprised that he is defeated, especially since he is supposed to be immortal. But he warns you that what you did, what you did, make make actually get you more trouble in the future. In this game, there's actually a lot of holes, so you really don't know exactly what he means by greater dangers. You don't find out about that until later in Infinite Blade 2 and Infinite Blade Awakening, what those dangers are. I don't think there's anything fun to give spoilers, so I'm not gonna spoil you what the sto story is about, what those holes are. For now, all I'm gonna do is uh, recommend you that you go ahead and do some research. You can buy the game Infinite Blade 2, you can read the book uh, Infinite Blade Awakening. And I will also create an Infinity Blade to walk through in the future. I recommend that you wait for the credits to be over because otherwise you're gonna miss this casting. Which I'm gonna show you, of course. Well, who would have thought this game had any technology at all? Alright, so thanks for watching everyone, and I look forward to see you in my next videos. Bye!